Alrighty, it's been a while since I've been on here. Let's make sure this fires up and we can get started. Um, I was thinking I could go through some <laughs> YouTube channel uh, comments and questions over here and boy I missed about a month worth of those so we're, we're gonna be kind of backlogged. I do have some files that I got on my Discord channel that uh, I can kind of go over and those are kind of fun to kind of take somebody else's work and kind of give it a spin. And of course, if you guys have any questions, you can fire them up there in the chat. I think I've got all three channels visible to me. So fire them up there in the chat. Okay, I think good. I've got all, everything seems to be working. Audio is working. We're good to go. So I'm just going to go down my list here. Let's go to my streaming folder. Go to Discord. And I will start at the top here. We'll start with Birdie Monster. And he says... Uh, this is a beaver hamster monster thingy. My Kratos will fight at the end of the God of War fan art level I'm working on. I don't know if you need if you could do some ideation on upper body and clothing. Uh, I've tried it and nothing really worked. Uh, leg anatomy isn't that good, but I'm going to cover that up with cloth and stuff later. <laughs> well, you know, when in doubt, cover it up. But uh, we'll take a look and we'll see what's going on here. And uh, here's, here's Birdie's... Uh, and Birdie's a moderator. Actually, he runs my entire Discord channel. So very nice of him to do that. And uh, we'll kind of give him a quick run over on here. So, I mean, if we want to start with Leg Anatomy, we can do that. Uh, we can go here. I mean, first of all, you want to... Let's go ahead and turn out perspective. Uh, if you want to judge the lengths of this stuff, sometimes what you can do is you can hit W and you can hit Y. And then you can use your Transpose. You can drag this out and you're going to see you have Unit... Uh, length on here. So sometimes if you want to do like an eight head high creature, you can go up here to your preferences, your transpose units, and you can kind of um, mess with this. Uh, and then you can kind of set them. Um, but usually if you're doing uh, creatures like this, I'm going to hit Y again to go back into gizmo mode. Or you can just hit this button up here. Uh, you're probably going to want super heroic or, uh, you know, smaller heads, only, you know, up to 12, upwards of uh, 12 heads high and stuff like that. Go over here to Subtool. Uh, oh, that's one more thing too. If you've um, got the new ZBrush, it's 2019. I know this is really old news. I haven't streamed since the new ZBrush, but I do have on my YouTube channel. I did a quick uh, did it, did it, ZBrush 2019 quick demo. Um, I can go ahead and link this to you. And I want to say, let's go ahead and measure that there. Um, so that's kind of a run through of all the, not all of them, but a good healthy portion of the new 2019 um, features, as well as, well, you know what, I was on my CGMA class where we did the rendering stuff. So you know what, we can do some rendering stuff too. Um, in fact, uh, if, uh, let me see, if you guys want to just kind of practice with something, let's go ahead and, there we go. You can hit the comma key, you can go up here to the tools, and you can load up a tool from here. You can go in here to project as well, and there's some good uh, rendering projects. Uh, but I, I can probably pull some from somewhere here. So uh, we got this guy, and I'm in solo mode here. And usually when I'm blocking something out, I like to have... Uh, it's a little bit easier for me uh, when I'm working with Dynamesh to go ahead and say, I'm going to hold down Control Shift, I'm going to go select Lasso, and you know I'm going to be working on, say, the arms, and not necessarily the arms separate from the body, but if I wanted to work on the body, it's easier just to kind of get those uh, arms out of the way. In fact, let's see what he's got going on here. So we got geometry, and this is just all one solid mesh. We go into polyframe here, you're going to see um, it's basically a Dynamesh slash um, Sculptors Pro mesh. If you guys don't know about Sculptors Pro, um, if you go to the ZBrush 2018 What's New playlist on my channel, or um, I'm trying to think what uh, the Pixelogic Classroom, you can go there. But on the ZBrush 2018 What's New, we got this whole playlist here, and there's a whole bunch of Sculptures Pro stuff you can check out and kind of go through all the new features of that. So I'm a little bit behind. I just got back from GDC and I'm swamped at work a little bit. So I'm going to do 2019 What's New this week. I've got two days off. I'm going to record them. So look for that. So anyway, uh, we're going to start here, and since it is just a Dynamesh, or I could convert it to just a Dynamesh here, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take these arms, I'm going to go ahead and split those off, and then for these legs here, I'm going to grab these legs here, and uh, you know what, I think that'll work. If you wanted to grab more, you can do Control shift drag with a Select Lasso or Select re um, Rectangle, and that'll just invert that. We'll go here to Select Lasso, and we'll go ahead and just hold down Alt, and just throw that off there. So now we've got these split out. I'm going to go ahead and split those. 
And now, usually when I'm working, I like to have, oh, you know what, also I like to have the head separated off. Uh, and we can go ahead, and one thing I'm looking I might change, and it seems like this is a, um, a common thing with Birdie specifically is uh, the necks usually don't give you a whole lot of leeway. So if he wanted to, you know, look down and look up, uh, he's not going to have a whole lot of room to do that. But what we can do is uh, if we wanted to move the head and the horns all at the same time, we can hit W. And then, of course, if you hold down Alt, you can just tap on your object. If you hold down Alt and then hold down Shift, you can kind of snap your gizmo here. You can also get it right down the middle if you wanted to. And then now you can move the head around, but of course you're going to leave the eyeballs and the teeth and the horns behind. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here to move multiple subtools. Just turn that on. Hold down Control Shift and tap. And then Control Shift drag and grab all of those subtools. Now the cool thing about this is uh, with the new version of ZBrush, if you go over here to your subtool palette, uh, you now have a new folder option, and you're going to see that's Control F. So if I hit Control F with these unhashed, it'll say, do you want to make these visible ones into its own folder? You can say yes, and then we can kind of type this head stuff, and now we've got a head stuff folder in here. Uh, a lot of different folder options in here. Of course, like I said, we went over that in the, the video I linked you guys. So you can check that out. But anyway, uh, and if you don't want to have this in a folder, you can go through here, you can just delete the folder. If you delete all, it's going to delete everything in your folder and the folder. If you just delete the folder, it's just going to delete uh, the folder out of there. So we'll turn that off and uh, well, actually we'll turn it back on. These are all in hash. We can go ahead and just move the head up uh, just a little bit. Give us a little bit more room uh, to kind of maneuver with. Now, of course, if this is just a DynaMesh, which we don't have DynaMesh turned on, so under here, Geometry DynaMesh here. Um, if you just turn that on, and let's turn off blur. That resolution's at 64, so if we just turn that on, it's going to dynamesh this object. You're going to see it's also going to close these holes. If you hold down Control Shift, and we'll go back to select rectangle here, you have uh, those holes closed. You can go in here, and you can. So you're also going to notice when you does a close holes operation, it doesn't um, mirror it. So I like to do a quick geometry modify topology mirror and weld, and you're going to see it changes just a little bit across that axis. Uh, but that's okay. So anyway, it goes ahead and closes the hole for you. However, you can control that. One area I might want to do that is on this one here. Oh, and also another thing too, if you DynaMesh and you realize the resolution's too low, uh, just raise that resolution up. And you can also use under Z plugin, there is a DDD DynaMesh mask. Oh, do I not have anything? I don't have anything downloaded on 2019 yet. Oops, <laughs> you can download uh, DynaMesh Master. You know what, let's go ahead and You Google Pixelogic Downloads or Pixelogic uh, ZBrush Plugins. You can go to their Downloads Center and then ZBrush Plugins. Scroll down, and then these ones at the top are already included with ZBrush. Um, but if you keep going down, you're going to see here some extra ones down here. And there is a, wait for it, DynaMesh Master. You can download that. And then that will download here into a zip file. And then we can take this. And let's go ahead and so you guys can see it here. It's our Discord files. I'm going to extract here. So here's what the folder you're going to get. And inside that folder, you're going to see there's an install and install text. All you got to do is drag this stuff here and put it into ZBrush 2019 Z Startup, Z Plug 64. And you can just take these here, both of these, and then just move them in there. There we go. So next time I start up ZBrush, I'll have DynaMesh Master. We can talk about that. Um, okay, got some questions um, or comments. Swing uh, Swang says, I'm taking your class in April on CGMA. I'm so excited to learn from you. Well, thank you very much. It should be a fun class. The last class we had a lot of, a lot of fun. And I'm trying to get the 2019 stuff done so we can throw that into the CGMA class, give you even more uh, stuff to learn. Um, it's already a pretty beefy class. You can see, uh, you know, all the stuff we cover in the class, and then some extracurricular stuff um, on Unit Six. There's a lot of extra stuff. So, with the new rendering and the new uh, functionality in ZBrush 2019, I'll keep you guys busy for sure. Um, Video Nomad says DynaMesh Master is borked for 2019, at least for me. Oh no! Well, that can happen in between the big. Not the point releases usually, but the big uh, number releases, 2018, 2019, ZBrush 4R8. Um, sometimes those uh, 
those plugins can kind of lose their functionality. But we won't, I mean, if I restart it, if I restart ZBrush and we hop back in there, I'll give it a shot and see what's up with that. Hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. And uh, so one thing we're talking about is that when we Dynamesh this one, in particular, Dynamesh does a close holes operation when it Dynameshes. However, sometimes you're going to get these little spindly, um, see how it's like very, very thin, and that's a feature of Dynamesh. And one thing I like to use Dynamesh for sometimes is we'll say we'll take a cube here, make Polymesh 3D, and then we're just going to say, go ahead and Dynamesh this. Now, if you hold down Control Shift and we go in here and we slice, you can slice through here. Another cool thing is you hold down Control Shift and then Spacebar, you can do a brush radius. So now the it'll slice through your object and leave a brush radius behind. And now if you take this, let's just do like this. So we're going to slice through this object. We have three to separate polygroups here. Um, if you go into Dynamesh, and I'll show you where that is, Geometry, Dynamesh, and then you have a Groups option. Turn that on, and then you Dynamesh. It's going to close the holes, and if as long as you have a nice straight cut, it'll go ahead and close those holes, and it'll, it'll do a nice job. So now what we can do is we can, like, for instance, take this middle one here. I'll go back in a slice curve, hit the space bar key so you can turn off brush radius. We can go ahead and slice through here, and then re-Dynamesh, and now we have, like, a perfect little piece. Oops. Turn uh, move multiple off here. So now we can like, if you hold down control and tap, you can just unmask one of these things. So if I wanted to move, you know, right along this axis or down this axis or whatever, we can hold down alt and just aim it. Um, sometimes if you have the the slope of that object here, so if you hold down control shift and isolate this one, you can hold down alt and just tap. But again, since these are straight, that's not going to help you very much. Um, you can go to the top plane here. So if you hold down Control Shift, hit W, and then hold tap Alt, it'll go down that axis. So now we can um, we can just isolate this one here, and then we can just slide right along here. But anyways, we can also, if you wanted to like scale this, we can go to Unmesh Mesh Center. We can scale this in a little bit, and now we have like a little piece we can just slide right through here. But the whole reason that works with Dynamesh and Group turned on is because we were Dynameshing. Uh, with straight nice cuts where that falls apart let's go ahead and get rid of this we'll say uh, delete hidden actually I mean we could leave this alone and that can be a separate piece so we can go hey you know what I'm gonna do a uh, split hidden that's under subtool split that'll split it up into its own sub uh, subtool now on this one here we can select it turn groups off and then redynamesh and now it'll just dynamesh back to one solid piece now if we were dynameshing at a higher resolution we wouldn't have these artifacts uh, but if you're just concepting stuff out it's not a big deal you can just smooth it out uh, so now you've got a separate subtool that'll just fit right perfectly within there of course, you can use Z-Modeler for this and stuff, but we're just talking about uh, Dynamesh and groups and slicing. Where this falls apart is if we go in here, and then we say, well, let's hit Control-W, make it all in polygroup here, and uh, I'm going to turn off um, Sculptors Pro. And then I'm going to hold down Control-Shift. We're going to do another slice curve, but this slice curve, I'm going to do something like, like a shape like this. So we've got this, and um, actually, that'll probably just do a fine job. Let's do a shape like this. There you go. So we're going to slice this through. And the other cool thing, too, is you can slice through uh, with different shapes. You can do like a slice circle. Go through here, and you can just uh, slice a circle through. Uh, if you want to make a perfect circle, you can go in here. Well, you can, there might be a perfect circle. If there's not, there's a clip circle center. But you can go down here to your stroke, and you can say square. So now when you drag it out, it'll just be perfectly one-to-one uh, -one ratio. Like so. And also you can turn it off if you don't want it to start from the center. You can turn off there and not off and then it'll just start from the corner. And then you can use spacebar to kind of move this stuff around. Um, anyway, we've got this. Then we turn groups back on and we dynamesh. And you're going to see what it does to this thing is it closes a hole, but it does a really weird job. Um, there's a way uh, that Chi Vang showed that you can kind of fix these odd shapes here. But really, this is what we're running into on that arm. And using that, that trick won't really work. So how you can avoid this, one of the ways you can avoid this, is you can undo um, the just Dynamesh close holes. And if I'm just going to do one side of the arm, I'm going to turn off X symmetry for now. Hold down Control Shift, go to Select Rectangle, hold down Alt, and then Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. And then we're just going to run a close holes operation manually closing that hole. Um, so we can hit W, and then Control Tap this here. There we go. And then now, 
if we uh, hold down control and drag out, that'll actually drag out an edge ring every time we do that. Um, another cool, and that, that'll that actually give you a little bit more breathing room around those uh, very thin edges, and you can use E to scale this in. Another thing you can do, oops, looks like we, when we did uh, the arm here and we filled holes, it actually closed. It's really weird. I can isolate this, and there's, it's, all just this piece. However, when we hit W and control tap this one, it's unmasking just a small area right there. Interesting. But anyway, another thing you do is you hit Y. Remember, we're just using transpose. Um, and we have this area just masked here. If you do E and go to scale and you hold down control, you can pull in an edge ring. Uh, you can also hit W and control and that'll just be like the gizmo. You can hold down control and shift and you can pull out edge rings as well. So between these two, we can maybe say, um, Let's hit E and then control scale this in and then hit W and just hold down shift and just pull that out. And again, that's going to give you a little bit of breathing room around that edge ring. And now you can just go ahead and just dynamesh this result and that'll give you a little bit of a cleaner um, edge here. Uh, another thing you do before you do that, if you hold down control shift and then control shift uh, X to expand and then hit control W, let's use control shift X to expand again. Okay, so we're going to grab that entire edge ring, and now that you have this, one thing you can do is I can isolate this poly group here, and you can go to like a deformation polish by features, and you can kind of polish that up if you want to smooth that out, or you just manually go through after you've dynameshed, you can just kind of smooth this result out as well. Um, you can also mask that border if you wanted to. You can uh, you can go down here to your masking. I'm just trying to think of ways you can do this. Masking, mask by features, your polygroup border. No, not the border. Um, you would want to do mask by features groups and then mask the area just between the groups. And then you can go in here and you can say grow that mask, control tap to invert that mask. And then you can do another polish by features and you can just polish up that line in between those two polygroups. I don't know. I don't know how useful that is, but that's all stuff you can do. Uh, as well as you can just Z modeler close that convex and concave holes, but that's probably a little bit much for such a sculpty uh, kind of thing. And here we can just go into mirror and weld, and then turn on X symmetry, and then now you have those two pieces put together. Oh, uh, let me. Um, I do not have Viber, but let me change the um, the title. Give me a second. Uh, what are we doing here? Thank you for calling that out. Uh, okay. Title. I think this will work. Or at least this this might be an old bad title, but that's me-ish. See if they let me do that. Cool. All right, so we've got this split out, and uh, if we wanted, you know, we extended this guy's neck a little bit, so we put a little bit more room in here. This would just be a simple matter of uh, going through here. Now, this made it all in polygroup, so we can isolate these polygroups. We can go in here to polygroup and then auto groups, uh, which is just down here under your tool menu here, and it'll give us all separate polygroups. However, we like to work with a mirrored mesh usually, so I'll do another mirror and weld so these polygroups are the same on both sides. And now we can hit W, control tap this one. Uh, we still have our transpose line, so we can hold down control and shift and we can just pull out an edge ring, or we can just hit W and just uh, shift and pull that out. It's not really important that we pull out edge rings in this case. Um, and then also you can hit Y and just go back into gizmo and that'll give you the exact same functionality. Um, if you wanted to, since this is already a dynamesh, we can just go in here and we can insert a primitive. So we can insert like a cylinder right down the middle here and we can use this as our neck. And if you wanted to have a, just a little bit more control, you can have a neck shape in here. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and like bend this neck around, uh, when you insert a mesh, it'll already be mass. So you can go through here and you can just move this stuff around. Uh, if you need more geometry here, you can, and you can leave this all one sub tool. If you wanted to, you can just split this off. You can just isolate or while it's still masked, it's probably easier just to say, Hey, split mass points. Uh, that's under your split menu, um, but of course you can control shift select it and split that out as needed. Uh, we can also hover over an edge here. We can go to insert multiple edge loops. Here we go. Just drop in some edge loops on this thing. Oh, if it's going to let me. Uh, oh, it's not symmetrical. Well, we can fix that. Do a quick mirror and weld, and then we can just add some geometry in here so we have a little bit more flexibility on our shape. And now we can go through here and we can just add a neck in. Uh, now, of course, because we did a 
just a shape. It's not going to match up perfectly. So this might be an argument for uh, just pulling up from that original neck. Uh, or you can just do this. So if you if you like this, you're also going to notice if I go down here to Geometry Dynamesh, it will have inherited. Uh, well, maybe not. It should have inherited these uh, Dynamesh properties unless this just wasn't turned on. If I turned it off, then it wouldn't do that. So this should have had Dynamesh turned on. It'll, it'll be on now. And then if I merge these two down, I have my hotkey for that, but it's down here to merge. You can just merge those down. And then now those are merged together and they can just go and smooth this out. And then you can go in here with like, say your Damien standard brush or your standard brush or your clay brush, or your clay build up, and you can start just, um, you know, working those in together. So anyway, a lot of talk and not a whole lot of stuff done. Um, <laughs> I am not sure. Oh yeah, if you go to zbrushlive.com, uh, Pixelogic will be streaming. I'm not sure what their streaming schedule is today exactly. But um, I'll be streaming. Actually, I should be streaming for two hours today. Unfortunately, long story short, went to the Ren Fair on Sunday. And then we got back. And then we, um, we got dropped off at our car. And then we took the car. And about two miles in, our car died after we, as after we picked up our dog from Doggy Daycare, where she goes and hangs out when we're gone for a long time. And so then... Uh, we had to get it towed and we got it towed to a car place and the car place called my wife yesterday and was like we can't fix this this is a some sort of a Ford Escape um, issue so you're going to take it to the Ford dealership so that's what we get to do this morning so I will be streaming for another 30 minutes uh, unfortunately I will so on Tuesday the first Tuesday of every month I'll stream on this channel and then on the first Thursday of every month I'll stream on my own channel have Mike at Twitch uh, and then also my YouTube channel as well. Uh, it should it should pass through to my YouTube channel. Although I need to check on that because I don't think it has the last couple times. But anyway, we're going to talk about leg anatomy here. So uh, we got the legs here. And again, just for speed, I'm just going to go ahead and dynamesh all this together. Just go ahead and close that holes. You can always go through here and just smooth stuff out and move stuff around and dynamesh this stuff back later. But now I can hop into solo mode. Oh, another thing you can do on these crunchy edges, um, you can hold down shift. And again, just turn on Sculptures Pro and that'll just eat right through any sort of those kind of weird things. And if you get these holes, just re-dynamesh and then I'll go ahead and fix those. And also I like to do a quick mirror and weld um, just because we end up doing symmetrical sculpts. So I want to make sure we're symmetrical. Uh, another thing you can do is if you have a little stray vert, sometimes you'll have like a little stray vert that just kind of pops out like that. And it's really hard to smooth back. If you hold on shift and go into your smooth brush modifiers, there is an option for min connected. If you set that to one, uh, you'll be able to kind of smooth out all those little shards, uh, but also turning on Sculptors Pro will just eat those away as well. So you can do that. And then of course you want to re and then I'll go ahead and do that. So now on this, I'm going to actually drop that resolution down. We're at a resolution of 64. Let's go down to 32. And when I'm blocking stuff out, uh, especially organic stuff, I want to make sure I'm as low as possible. Now you're going to see if I wanted to move a big portion of this, uh, like maybe his entire lower leg with the move brush, you're going to see my move brush kind of caps out here. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll make all of this stuff ZBrush scale, um, but if you're working at your own scale or you've started with a Z sphere and you've gotten really big, one thing you can do is you go in here to preferences and under draw, there's a dynamic brush scale and a max brush size. Uh, you can crank that max brush size up to 5000 and then it'll go up to 5000 at that point. What I like to do is I'll reset that instead of just doing, I'll just keep it at 1000, but I'll change that dynamic brush scale up to like maybe three. So now it'll still only go to a thousand, but at least it gives you a little bit more range. Uh, same thing as if you're working on something that's really small in ZBrush scale, uh, you can do the opposite. So you go in here to preferences and you can drop that dynamic brush scale to like 0.25 and that'll kind of reset you and makes you a little bit more um, ZBrush compatible. Um, if you did want to make all of the ZBrush compatible, one thing you can do, one thing I like to do is I'll go down here to Merge Visible. That'll throw out a sub-tool up here. And then you can just go in here and you can do a Deformation Unify. And what that does, if we append a cube, you're going to see it just makes the bounding box for this object the same transparency area. It just fits our character within the ZBrush bounding box of a cube. So now if I go over here, now my brush gets really big. So we can go back here to Preferences. And we can go over here to draw and you can change the dynamic, dynamic brush scale back to one. And now everything in ZBrush should behave um, a little more predictably, but there's ways around it. No big deal. 
Another thing you can do actually is you can, uh, I suppose one thing you can do is you can export this as an FBX and then you can restart ZBrush and import it with the FBX. You won't lose, you'll keep all of your subtool names and polypaint stuff like that. Um, but hopefully that would reset you to be more at ZBrush scale because essentially what we're looking for here is on your geometry size options that this ZBrush XYZ size is about, should be around two-ish ideally. Um, and then on export it'll readjust your export to get your scale back to correct quote unquote. So if you bring in something that's like millimeter scale from Marvelous Designer, uh, ZBrush will adjust this XYZ size and keep it around two because that makes it work well within ZBrush's system. And then it'll, on export, it'll give you a scale uh, value that'll adjust. Cool. Um, did I break your ZBrush again? We're gonna it. Uh, no, it worked. Cool, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, glad the videos are helping. And again, I'm going to get some more videos done this week. I have some time off to do that. Um, oh, the Unreal Mannequin. Yeah, so what I would do is, like, if you've got the Unreal Mannequin as an FBX, you can bring in, or an RBJ, uh, import that. And then it should it should do the scale. It should do that uh, XYZ size so that it's more 2-ish. And then down here, your export scale will be... Uh, adjusted for that and that'll just make it work a little bit nicer within ZBrush but and then again this is fine it's not a big deal so uh, you know you want to check you know top of the head the bottom of the feet and then halfway down is going to be kind of the bottom of your crotch so he's got a little bit stumpier legs not necessarily a bad thing just make sure if you're doing that it's for a you know a reason and you wanted to give him a little bit uh, lower legs if you didn't you can go in here and you can just scale these things down and give him a little bit more uh, breathing room here and kind of evens them out again here to here. And again, he's got a very small head, which isn't necessarily a bad thing either. Super duper heroic proportions. Um, his arms here with this down, so his great trochanter, greater trochanter out. Um, and actually we can kind of we can do this here. Let's go ahead and turn off these wraps here. And turn these off. And also, it looks like these straps here, if we go into solo mode, if we go down here to display properties and we look at no, I guess those are right. They just have some very um, thin edges over here. And we can talk about that too. Strap creation. Um, sometimes those are easy. Some if, if they're straps are easy if you don't if you don't feel like doing real straps, it's really easy. Um, but if you want to do real straps, getting that to kind of really work is a kind of a trial. But anyway, we can go through here and we can kind of just test. You know, he drops his arms down a little bit here. So at the bottom of the rib cage here is going to be your elbow. Then the great trochanter here is going to be your wrist. Um, his forearm could probably stand to be a little bit longer here. Uh, and that's an easier fix too. So you can go here and mask pin. Let's do mask lasso. And go through here and just And then control tap if you want to blur that transition out a little bit here. And then now the part of the problem is, is uh, if you just kind of scale along an axis, well, first of all, you're going to notice it goes here and then here. So to fix that, turn on local symmetry, and now you'll scale along that local symmetry axis. Um, now, if you do a uniform scale, it's going to give him a Popeye look. If you do a non-uniform scale, it's going to start stretching those fingers. So probably what your best bet is is just to grab down the middle here. Oops. And then uh, control tap to invert that, and then just use move. And you can move down an axis if you hold down W and just kind of drag down, it'll just, uh, how do I explain that? Hold down Alt, and then as you're dragging, it's going to stick to whatever point on your object you have, and it's just gonna push that Y direction right down. I mean, I don't, I'm sure it's always gonna be X, Y, or Z. The green arrow down this way, and then you hold down Shift, and it'll just move along that axis. It might be easier if you hit Y and go back into transpose mode, you're gonna see the transpose line is right along that axis. Essentially what you're doing with transpose, you click once, and then as you're dragging, it's gonna stick the other end uh, to your object. So now you have that direction on here. So now you can just hold down Shift, and again, just kind of pull along, kind of like that surface normal of that arm, or that direction of the arm you wanna go in. So we can go through here and we can kind of just clay brush that up and kind of fix that a little bit. Uh, hand size, now hand size, you would you would want to do a um, uniform scale. I'm not saying that the hand should be bigger or smaller. This just reminds me that if you did want to make the hands bigger, that would be an instance where you would want to uniformly, whoops, hold on. Go back in edit mode. Sorry, I went out of edit mode there. Let's hit W and then Y, I hit T instead of Y. And then now you can like anchor 
this, just hold down Alt and just kind of put it in here. And then uh, again, you can do a uniform scale if you want to give them uh, bigger or smaller hands. Uh, and again, if you have local sim turned off, it's going to want to scale towards and away from that world center. So just turn that back on and then you can scale this back up or down. So uh, maybe a hand's a little bit bigger. Now, uh, getting back to the legs here, this one, the legs are divided into nice compartmentalized uh, sections here. Um, if you saw my GDC, uh, my GDC post, you see I drew, was drawing a lot of butts on the airplane. So it's still kind of fresh in my mind here. So you're gonna have um, your greater trochanter kind of, that'll be that pivot point along which your gluteus maximus, your gluteus medius, uh, your TFL, and your iliotibial band will all kind of fit along here. So, um, it's the best way to do this. If I go into solo mode here, you're gonna see this is your oblique and that's gonna go over that iliac crest. Uh, it's gonna kind of lean or kind of uh, go over that a little bit, especially on the males, it's gonna kind of um, overlap that top of that iliac crest. Now your anterior superior iliac spine is still gonna be, let's turn off lazy mouse here. It's still going to be a visible landmark here, a little bony landmark here. Uh, but that top ridge of that uh, crest is still going to be underneath your oblique. But if we go into solo mode here, we can pretend like, or we have the leeway, we can kind of just go through here and we can actually bump this up. So it is going to still be under your oblique here, so that oblique is going to overlap this. But just a but, just to demonstrate butts, we can go through here and we can you kind of make that a little bit easier to see. So now on here, uh, spiraling right around that uh, trochanter here, we can go in here and we can, so we have the entire crest of the uh, iliac, the spine here, and it's gonna stop right about here. And it's gonna stop here. So here's your asis and your pieces back here. And then this is all your sacrum. So this is where uh, on females, you'll get that dimple here. And this is also where the, um, you know, you've got this spine, this goes right along here, and that's where your um, pelvis is. If you want to see this a little bit clearer, to the common key, and we'll go into the tool, and we're just going to grab the Ryan King's line anatomy model, and we will pull this out here. So that's what I'm talking about. So essentially, if you want to get these arms out of the way, hold down Control Shift, and we'll grab a select lasso. Let's grab all these, Control Shift A, and we can do a split hidden. You can also hit Control W and make it all one polygroup here. So now you can just go Control Shift click on these green areas and get those out of the way. Uh, but essentially you've got this anterior superior iliac spine and then your posterior superior iliac spine, I suppose. No, yeah, posterior, anterior. And then uh, right around here, and in fact, we can just do this. Let's go in here and we're gonna insert, actually, in order to insert something, I'm gonna grab this piece here and we're gonna split this off. And then we're just going to drop in a base primitive of a sphere here. So this will be our muscle. We're going to kind of maneuver around here. And we can hit W and we can just kind of mush this into place. So this is going to go all the way, not all the way to the front, but say about here, like the gluteus medius. And it's not going to go all the way to the back either. It's just going to be right along this middle part here. And then it's going to attach down here, and now there's an iliotibial band. Uh, so the gluteus medius will be kind of on top of that, and then your iliotibial band's going to be, actually, I think we can show everything. Let's turn off solo mode. Um, it's this one here. These are fat deposits. I'm just gonna turn those off. This one here. So you're gonna see, uh, here's your iliotibial band. If we turn on, let's hit control W. You can see that a little bit better. So here's your um, TFL, your tensor fascia lata. And then your iliotibial band kind of goes here around your great trochanter, then down here, and then your gluteus medius attaches to that, and also uh, the iliotibial band goes in here and attaches to your tibia, from your tibia here. So that's that whole section there. So we can go back up to our skeleton. Let's go back into solo mode here. And so then your gluteus medius will attach here, and then also like halfway down your, th not halfway down, but a good healthy portion of your thigh is your gluteus medius. But of course you're gonna wanna remember your fat pads, because a lot of fat and skin make up the overall shape of this thing. So anyway, long story short, we can go in here. And because this is just, we're just kind of sculpting here, we can just very quickly go through here and just, you can dial in your landmarks. So here's your, and not that you would really see any of this, it's just a way to kind of keep you, um, honest 
with what you're making here. So you want to make sure that like, okay. And also, oops, let's go in here. Um, these things are going to be thick. They're thick muscles. They don't go from point A to point B in a very flat way. They don't just go here to here and just flat. They are rounded. These are very thick muscles. And of course they do have uh, fat pads on top of them. So this is going to give you that kind of tire look here. And then it's going to go around this bony uh, landmark here. And then this is just going to be a band uh, here. So it's going to be kind of flat here. And then you've got your uh, rectus femoris, your vastus medialis, vastus lateralis. And then this part here will be a little more, there's a lot of tendons and stuff that need to grab on here. And that's going to round this out. And then on this outside here where your tibia and your femur uh, meet up, it's going to be flatter on this side. So you're going to have a nice smooth curve on the inside. And then you're going to have that you know, nice curve in here where your tibia, your, your shin bone is, and then down here. So like you said, if you're just going to cover this up with pants, uh, you know, you don't have to go super detailed, but again, just, you know, proportions in that case and your volumes in that case would be more important. Yes. <laughs> So uh, anyway, there's some of that stuff. And it, 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 again, if you wanted to, leg does some uh, special stuff whenever you start uh, bending it. Um, you, if you are going to transpose these things, and in week six, we do get in, in my ZGMA class, or if you got the um, the six part, seven part, seven part series, uh, you can go through that. You can go through that as well. Uh, but essentially. You know, when you get into transpose posing, uh, there's some stuff you have to, there's some hoops you have to jump through as far as like Ziri meshing this down to a lower res mesh so that you can go through and maybe use a Z-sphere rig. Or you can simply just go in here with W, uh, just grab this, control tap if you want to blur that out a little bit. It's also, that's just the, uh, if you go in here to masking, there's a masking blur mask. You can just click blur mask or you can control tap. You can control alt tap to sharpen mask here. Control alt tap to sharpen, control tap to blur, control tap in here to invert, control shift. That's uh, all the visibility stuff. But all of this stuff right here can be done just on your screen without having to go over to your menu. But if you're more comfortable, you can go in here and blur that mask, invert that mask, and then you can just start bending this around. Now, of course, when the knee bends, it's not going to be, uh, you know, goopy like that. It's not going to be bendy. You know, you're going to have your patella and then your tibia point of the tibia here and it's going to be flat and then the epicondyles and the femur you have some bony landmarks in here and then the big muscles on here and then the the um, big straps and little fat pads underneath your knees and stuff are going to do uh, do different shapes same thing as when you bend your elbow you know your own is going to pop out your elbow is going to be pointy uh, and then your condyles are going to kind of sink below a little bit, it's going to give the illusion of that just because things are going to be rotating around. Uh, so again, you're just going to dial in those landmarks and you're going to do essentially what is corrective, kind of corrective blend shapes, I guess, or just pose based blend shapes where, you know, you can pose something out and then you go in and you sculpt your object to deform correctly. If you're not having like a bones and muscle sim drive, all this stuff, which we don't have in this program, obviously. That's a lot of setup, even out externally from ZBrush. So it's easier just to bend something and then go in here and just do some minor corrections and sculpt. Um, you know, so when you're bending this, these things, you know, what's going to tense, what's going to flex when you bend your elbow, um, for instance. And we're kind of going off the rails here a little bit. Sorry, Bertie. Uh, but we're just going to, so here we got to bend this arm if you were going to pose this thing. The... When you're bending your arm, your triceps aren't going to really be flexed. I mean, you can kind of flex them, but really when you put your arm back, that's when it's pulling and those triceps are really going to pop. Uh, but in this case, you're going to bend this forward and this is what's going to uh, bulge on this side here. And then on the back here, these are going to be smoothed out or the opposite of, you know, you put that arm back. You know, this obviously is going to stretch and then back here, these we can kind of pop these out and it won't look, you know, silly, but anyway, we'll go back here. But speaking of just the knee stuff you have going on here, 
And again, if you're going to cover this up, it is it is just a way to make sure your volumes are correct. So we can just very quickly go through here and say, okay, uh, rectus, rectus femoris, vas lateralis, vas medialis. And go ahead and just make sure your volumes, you know, you've got this tendon here and then these shapes here. And also the flow of like, here's the curved part here. And then here's the flatter part here. Um, this one here, he's kind of coming in. Uh, I mean, you are going to have you know, here's your great trochanter to your knee, to your ankle, and so your bones are doing this, but your legs will be a straightish. Um, so I'll leave that up to you if you want to kind of adjust this just a tiny bit. And oh, and that's another thing too, if you just hold down Control and Alt, um, you can very quickly just unmask something so you can do quick. And we are getting capped there, that's okay. I don't need to go into the draw menu again. But you at least know how to do that now. And kind of even this out just a little bit here. And then go into our clay brush here. And then this is where you're going to have, you know, make sure you have your patella and then the fat pads beneath the knee. And then these, the tendon that goes with the rectus femoris and these little bony landmarks where your fibula is. And then also, um, so the tibia is going to be on this side here. So it's going to be high to low. And then your calf is also going to be high to low. And then this one, it's going to be high on the inside where your tibia is and your fibula is actually going to be down lower. Uh, that attaches way back here. Your fibula kind of sets back and then all this stuff here. And then in back here, you're going to have a little bit of fat where your soleus kind of goes in and then your hamstrings. Uh, but you usually do have a little bump here for your hamstrings and then a little fat deposit that area and then your calf. So again, just looking for those major volumes, make sure those are correct. So when you do go put on clothes, um, even if you don't need to detail that out, the volumes will be correct. Uh, at what point do you transition from Dynamesh to working with subdivision levels? Uh, usually pretty early. Essentially when I, when I stop making decisions like anything major, like so I'm working on the head, for example. So we're gonna play around with this head. So this has uh, got his beaver head here. And we're just going to dynamesh this mesh. And I'm, I do like to work low, so I'm going to go through here and I'm going to kind of play around with like, um, okay, here's his brow and then we can go in here. And I have standard brush and we have uh, lazy mouse is turned off. You can tap L and turn that off. If you turn it on, I like to have lazy mouse on with the little, if I do want a smooth stroke, I can crank that value up and that's just under stroke here. Stroke, uh, lazy mouse and crank that up. Uh, lazy radius, but then if you tap L, it turns it off. So when I'm sculpting, I'll just turn that off. And then if I do want a very uh, controlled stroke, I'll just crank that value up. Um, but for instance, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Dynamesh mode here. So if I want to make some major changes here, and if you accidentally do have a Dynamesh and you hit tap D, and then it gets smooth, and then you start trying to sculpt, it's going to be very slow. That's because you hit D and you accidentally turned on uh, dynamic subdivisions here. So if you have this on, oh, and actually it looks like it just broke. Uh, if it ever does break and yells at you, just go down here to um, mesh integrity and say fix mesh. And then now it should let you, there we go. So now I do D and shift D to turn that on and off. Now when you're just sculpting, generally uh, you don't want to have dynamic subdivisions turned on. That's for more of like a box modeling stuff. Um, but if I'm doing major changes like you know, really pulling meshes around. It's like, okay, I want to fit this head around this horn here, and I'm really pulling stuff around like this, or if I'm really going through here and we're clipping stuff back like so, and then I'm dynameshing again. Anytime, if I'm actively using dynamesh to make major changes and to reset my geometry or re um, distribute my geometry on the fly, that's the whole point of dynamesh. If I'm actively using Dynamesh, then I'm just going to, obviously I'm going to keep Dynamesh. However, while I'm using Dynamesh, I don't try to get caught up too much into like my secondary forms. Certainly not my pore detail or anything like that. I can still get pretty detailed. Like this is fairly low res. It's not a Dynamesh where it's like, well, look at all that detail. Um, detail stuff I'll do after, like you said, I've transitioned from a Dynamesh to a... Um, subdivision mesh essentially so we'd have a low res mesh and how you would do that and, and there, I've got YouTube uh, videos on that so if we just do like a search my YouTube channel for Z mesh topology something like that yeah Z sphere Z remesh topology cleanup poly grouping and Z remesh 
all that kind of stuff. If you watch those videos, um, that's just getting your knight itself a nice low controlled cage essentially, and then projecting your details back. So subdivide, project, subdivide, project, and then you'll transition from a dyna mesh to a real mesh. Um, but essentially, when I do that transition is once I'm done making any major changes. If I'm just working on like you know I'm I'm done making these major changes here, so I'm done dyna meshing, and now I'm just going through here. And I was holding down Alt and I'm kind of just dialing in my form. So once my forms are done, my primary forms are done, my secondary forms are done, that's usually when I'll transition. Um, and that's not to say like this will be the highest resolution that I would work on on a Dynamesh. It's not. I would I would go through here and it's like, okay, uh, let's fix these eyes a little bit here. So these eyes are deep set eyes, um, but they are, it's kind of weird because a beaver doesn't have predatory eyes. They're not on the front of the head. They're on the side of the head a little bit more, kind of like a deer, um, I think. You know, it's been a long time since I looked at a beaver head. Usually they're prey here. Yeah, so they're kind of on the out on the side of the head here, but if you wanted to kind of bring these in towards the middle a little bit, give them a little bit more of a predatory look, uh, you can certainly do that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to give him a little bit more breathing room around here, maybe a little bit more uh, cheekbones here. And if you do want to get, let's get these out of the way temporarily so we can turn those horns off here. And that's just alt tapping on a sub tool. So now we can go through here and we can hit D. Then we can go through here. If you want to give him like eye bags, you can kind of cut in some eye bags here. You can hold down shift to smooth. And then you can hold down alt as well. You can pull up like ridges if you want to do like a bony ridge here. You can, and then you can use the clay brush to kind of build up to that bony ridge there. And then you can hold down shift to smooth, and then so really it's just a lot of Damien standard, uh, standard brush to kind of build up my forms, and then clay brush to build up my forms, and just kind of going back and forth between those. Um, as I'm getting more details, like you see, I'm running out of detail to kind of put in an eyelids. Also, if you want it a little bit more easy to control these eyelids, one thing I'll do is I'll go through here, and I'm just going to put in a cavity. Just a big cavity for those eyes to sit in, like so. And that gives me also a little bit more leeway to make sure that I can kind of, let's turn on X symmetry here, just tap X. So we can kind of, again, we can make these uh, eyes a little bit more predatory. It might end up making them look more like a panther or something like that, because you are changing that face a little bit. You're gonna have to really lean heavy on those beaver teeth to sell the idea that this is a beaver. Um, just be aware of that. Um, but if we do make this uh, more predatory and we do have kind of just put in a big socket in here. And then if we do want to have a little bit more control over our eyelids, we can just duplicate off those eyeballs here. And I'm going to go into my deformation menu. It's just down here. We can go in here to inflate. Here, we can just inflate those eyeballs up. And we turn on polyframe here. I'm going to actually turn on, uh, turn off X symmetry, hold down control shift. And you see we have clip curve as the last thing we use. If you tap control, that'll switch it back over to, temporarily back over to visibility. Visibility. Hold down alt, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And now you've got just one side here. Hold down control shift, and we'll go to the slice curve here. And so now what we can do, actually before we do that, we'll go ahead and say duplicate this eyeball off. And I've changed my mind. Instead of doing slice, Hold down control shift and go in here to trim curve. And we're going to trim the bottom of that off. So now I've got an upper eyelid. And then, uh, and actually it might be better. Well, that's fine. We'll trim that bottom part off for an upper eyelid. And then we'll grab this duplicate here. And we'll trim this part off for a lower eyelid. So now we have a little bit more control over our eyelids. We can merge these down. Just subtool merge. And then we'll do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. Now, you're going to see when I did a mirror and weld, it just mirror and welded it across its local symmetry axis. So we did a mirror and weld and it stayed on the left side, uh, but it didn't mirror weld across the world axis. That's because we had LSIM turned on from earlier. So if you turn LSIM off and then we do a mirror and weld, then it'll mirror and weld across your world axis. So just make sure you have that. Now, the reason why we would want to have LSIM turned on is if we wanted to say scale these up, see how it's going here like crazy. Just turn LSIM off and go to unmesh mesh center. And now you can scale this up and down like so. So the whole point of this was just to have a little bit more control over my eyelids. Now, these are the same poly group. So if we want to go through here and move these things separately, you can like do hold down control shift, go into select rectangle, grab this top part, control shift A. And now you can like move these things separately. You can control tap the mask, bring the other one back and control tap and you can invert masking in between these things. Uh, another thing you can do is you can do uh, poly groups, auto groups, and then do a quick mirror and weld. 
And then um, you can hit W and you can control tap this one. And then now you can go through here and you can move these separately. Another thing you can do is under your move brush, there is an auto masking and there's a topological. There's also a polygroup. So if you turn that up to 100, since these are all separate polygroups here, um, the first polygroup you choose, it'll allow you to kind of just move those independently from the other. Uh, if you wanna, don't wanna mess with polygroups, you can put that back down to zero, turn on topological. And then now you're gonna see we have uh, whatever, since these aren't vert welded, uh, these are actually separate. They're just kind of sitting next to each other. You can just move these independently from each other, whatever one you select first. Uh, however, if we go in here and we dynamesh these, um, and actually you don't have to go to topological, move topological. This is something I do. Um, you can go in here to, if you hit B for the brush menu, M, and then uh, T, BMT, you're going to see that'll select move topological for you. It's just the move brush with that turned on with a little bit of a different range. Uh, but I just like to go in here and just turn that on and off as needed. But anyway, if you dynamesh these, now they are vert welded. So now move topological isn't going to do that great of a job because, you know, those things are all welded together now. So now you'd have to use polygroups or something like that. But anyway, this will give you a little bit more control over kind of working those eyelids a little bit more, like independently. But you can always dynamesh the stuff together um, eventually and just be able to, you know, Again, it's all about giving you enough control while you're getting your forms into place so you don't have to like sit there and like have to handle or manage too many things on these tiny shapes here. You can go through and you can really, you know, put these however you'd like. And then when you're ready, uh, you can dynamesh these both together. Now on the head here, I'm going to actually use a bent arrow to put the head above the eyelid. So I'm ready to merge these down. Um, They'll be merged together, but I wouldn't merge them just yet because again, this is where I'm going to go through and I'm just going to kind of maximize, put that orbit in here and we can kind of overlap this orbit here and we can kind of go through here and we can give it a little bit of a brow. Got a pretty serious brow ridge in here and then the cheekbones through here and uh, you know, making sure we have all your features kind of dialed in. And then if we were to merge these two together, we're going to lose a lot of resolution on these. So what I'll do is I'll work on, you know, the eyelids will be at a higher resolution. The hands will be at a higher resolution. So the fingers aren't sticking together with DynaMesh. Uh, the body will probably be at a lower resolution, honestly, because we can always drop that down, especially if I'm just like blocking in my major forms here, just easier. That might be a little bit low. Let's say 16. That's actually a little bit low too. Let's say 24. Yeah, there we go. I'd probably be working at this resolution on the body and then a little bit higher resolution on the head. You know, just while I'm getting that stuff figured out. And then if we turn those horns back on, yeah. So it's kind of turned into like a kind of an Alice in Wonderland character. It's got that kind of feel to me for some reason. I think it's that angry chipmunk animal kind of feel. It's giving me that. Oh, let's see if I can get caught up here. Um, yeah, 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 okay, let's see. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Uh, and again, I'm probably gonna have to leave pretty soon. My, my wife's uh, working out. We gotta go pick up her car. I know, just the first day I'm back and we already have, oh, car troubles. So I apologize, but I'm gonna be back Thursday on my channel. We'll, we'll pick up where we left off. Uh, basic shapes, high detail, Sculptors Pro is freaking amazing. Um, yeah, and that's another thing too, is I'll usually just stick with DynaMesh just because I'm used to it, but really, yeah, always keep in mind the Sculptors Pro if you want to just, uh, and if you want to know more about Sculptors Pro on my YouTube channel, the ZBrush 2018 What's New playlist, here, uh, just go to this playlist here and you'll see, here's a full playlist and all this kind of block out stuff you can do. Uh, it includes Sculptors Pro and kind of just Sculptors Pro best practices and kind of main, keeping your um, oops, keeping your meshes. Uh, you can you can decimate your meshes down to make Sculptors, Sculptors Pro a little bit more responsive. Uh, it's a very very cool tool to kind of just dial in uh, detail just exactly where you need it. So for example, uh, you can see this is very low, but if it's like you know what I just want to start you know, detailing this eye eyeball out of this nose out um, instead of going through here with my uh, you know, 
dyna meshing at higher resolution or zero meshing and then projecting my detail back and going up and having everything be subdivided then you can just turn on sculptures pro make your brush size small and then now you can just go through here you can actually hold down shift to smooth and if you turn your z intensity i don't know if it's a cool trick or not but z intensity down to zero um while you hold down shift it's not going to smooth anything but it is going to just add geometry in that area and then at that point you can just turn sculptures pro off if you want and then you can just you know sculpt on here however you'd like um, if you know sculptures pro kind of feels weird to you and then we can go back up here to z intensity let's crank that back up oh another thing i like to do is i'll do smooth stronger you hold down shift go to the smooth brush modifiers there is a weighted smooth mode that sets the stronger i have that loaded in automatically but you can go in your I think I mention this every time. Go to your comma key and your brushes under your smooth brush here. And you can grab smooth stronger out of here. So, I don't know. All that stuff. But now you've got more detail in this area. Um, if you, however, if at this point, if you do this and then you turn, you re mesh, it's just going to kill all of that work that you've done. So just be aware of that. Uh, hold on. Sorry about that. I didn't get a drink. So, anyway. I'd probably be more inclined uh, just to kind of go through here. And this, and when I'm using Dynamesh, it just also keeps me um, just thinking about my forms. And I'm trying to, let me see if I can get a, a bigger picture here. Okay, I guess that'll work. And how this is going to work. So, uh, getting back to here, we can kind of just I can flatten and broaden this out a little bit. And it looks like even on the one I'm looking at, his nose is actually um, a little bit higher. His nostrils are kind of up, like so. Uh, you can also use spot. So there's a new spotlight modeling that you can do. It's really cool for hard surface stuff. Um, but in here, if you wanted to bring in a spotlight image, you could use that and kind of match uh, your features to that. But you know what? On this one here, let's go ahead and raise that Dynamesh resolution up from 64 to say 128. So now I've got more resolution here, and then we can go through here and we can kind of start, you know, carving in these details a little bit more. And then same thing on the eyeballs. And then at this point, I'd probably feel pretty okay reintegrating the eyelids back because I have enough uh, resolution here. So at this point, if I have the body and then the eyelids here, if I take this body and I merge it down and then redynamesh, it'll inherit those dynamesh properties. So now, uh, if I hold on Shift, I'm going to drop that Z intensity down a bit. Let me go ahead and smooth this out. Now, overlapping geometry is Dynamesh does not work well with that. So if you wanted to like have an eyelid that went up and then you actually had a bony orbit go down over your eyelid and you didn't want it to kind of mush together, that's where you'd have to go in Ziri Mesh and then manually come in and grab those verts and really create just really pull down and have that overlapping and it'll give you a really nice look as opposed to Dynamesh, which is just going to munge those together. So just something to keep in mind, you know, one of some of the limitations of Dynamesh. Now you can also use Sculptors Pro um, because if we do something like this, if we hold down, uh, oh, I don't have that anymore. Let's go B, S, and then Snake Hook. So we can um, snake hook this around. You're going to see when I snake hook out, it kind of starts losing resolution until it just turns into nothing. Um, however, you turn Sculptors Pro on, you can snake hook out, and it'll actually just continue um, to add resolution as you go. So what we can do is we can, like, say, snake hook out here. And then we can, like, snake hook this back in here. And actually, if you hold down Shift and start smoothing and then let go of Shift, it'll turn into an inflate. Um, let's crank that up again. It'll run like an inflate here. So now if we Sculptors Pro this back, if I can get it to here. Okay, what we need to do is, I remember where this is, under the brush, modifiers, uh, the brush modifier at zero. Just trying to get it to, there we go, yeah. So brush modifier up at 100 will uh, pull towards the camera, brush modifier down at zero will allow you to kind of dictate that. Now you're gonna see when I pull this in, it's, uh, or when I get it close, let's in fact, let's go into the, since I have Sculptors Pro on, I can merge these two things together with sculpting, but if I hold down shift, it's gonna keep them separate. However, um, if I control drag, that's gonna dynamesh those together. Uh, you could also, instead of doing that, if you wanted to keep that transition better, you can go in here to your um, W, 
your gizmo here, and you can say uh, remesh by union, and then uh, I can turn off symmetry here. And then I'll go ahead and just Z remesh, or not remesh, uh, it'll do a Boolean operation and just kind of weld those two points together. So that's another option for you. Um, but Sculptors Pro won't stick things together, so if you watch the Octop octopus uh, time lapse that I did, that's how you're able to pull arms out and keep them separate from your meshes. Whereas Dynamesh, if you Dynamesh, it's going to just pull everything together. Now, if you want to get rid of these, we have Sculptors Pro turned on, so you just very quickly go through here and just rip, Sculptors Pro them out, like so. Uh, so question is something I noticed, if you have a broken mesh, the shortcut D will allow you to preview the subdue mode, where if you click on dynamic button, the same broken mesh will tell you to fix your mesh. I just had that happen. Yeah, earlier in this uh, video, I went uh, D and it worked, and then I went out of it, and then I hit the button and it went, hey, you need to, you got points and stuff, so yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, it seems like it almost catches up with you where it's like, hey, wait, actually, mathematically, I can't do this. And that's just going to be under, if, if anybody's coming in here later, uh, geometry, mesh integrity, you can say fix mesh, and then it'll go ahead and um, get rid of those problems for you. So it'll allow you to dynamically subdivide. Uh, about shapes and muscle, I saw people start doing bones and muscles and working on others doing the body and accentuating the muscles. What's the right ways? Are there just different workflows? That's a good question. And this, when I used to teach anatomy at Gemini, I don't teach there anymore. Uh, I just didn't have enough time when I transitioned to um, be the director of characters at certain affinity. Um, I always, it's always a, it was always a struggle to go from, because you need to know the bones because they control the bony landmarks, which where the muscles attach, and then your superficial anatomy goes onto. However, you also need to know the forms of the body and how the whole body works together. So, do you start with like figure drawing, or do you start with bones and build on top of bones. Um, my gut tells me, or do you start deep and go superficial, or you start superficial and then go deep? Do you do both? Do you do neither? My gut tells me starting superficial is probably your best bet. So starting with figure drawing, starting with like torso twisting and your forms and your major, you're kind of blocking out your character is probably your better bet and learning proportions first. And you can you can learn the bony landmarks at least while you're doing proportion stuff because some of your bony landmarks dictate where your how your proportions are kind of set up. Um, but yeah, starting with bones and then putting muscles on them and then putting fat deposits on them and then learning superficial anatomy. I guess you know honestly, I guess the best thing to do would be like learn figure drawing and gesture and forms and uh, volume and then learn. At the same time, learning anatomy and maybe, you know, because your your figure drawing will take care of your superficial forms and your your the major volumes and stuff like that, and then you can supplement that with anatomy, and then between those two, yeah, I, I guess that would be the best way. I'm not pro I'm not positive. I wish I had a. If I figure that out, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, what would be the best part of the body to work on first in order to get a grasp on anatomy, like doing a head skull? And working your way up, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, kind of like what we talked about uh, just now is like, what I would probably start off with, because it's weird, because as I, le I learned, I learned anatomy, what I think is the wrong way, which is I did learn the bones, and then the muscles, and the names first, but I was, didn't really understand it that well, or volumes, or proportions that well. I mean, a little bit I did. Um, but I had a pretty good idea of like bony landmarks and where those were. And then when I, you know, figure drawing or just drawing, I was able to take that information, that knowledge and apply it to that stuff. So I would say start with, I would say start superficial and just be, be cognizant of bony landmarks. You don't have to know origins and insertions and names and muscle attachments and muscles necessarily. But if you start with volumes, chest volume, pelvis volume, legs, arms, head, and neck, and kind of get those working together, you can dial in, you can kind of dive in with x-ray vision later on, as you can kind of supplement your volume knowledge with your intrinsic anatomy knowledge. I think that's probably your best bet. My opinion, I don't know. What do I know? I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, like learning the muscles and stuff and the 
bone, the individual bones is less important, I think, than learning the superficial volumes and how the body twists and moves and the 3D cylinders and stuff. That's way more important, I think, than necessarily the little bitty knowledge of anatomy. Um, suggestion for optimizing posing mechanical characters in ZBrush when a robot has multiple subtools. I have to add a temporary pivot because the gizmo loses the original orientation. So one thing you can do is, let's go ahead and load up. Let me see if I have one here. I think I do. If I go to tool, um, ooh, I gotta head out. Okay, um, this will be the last thing I cover real quickly. So let me just go here to my, um, all right, can I get out to my E drive? And then it's called Nautilus characters. No. Damn. Well, I had, oh, there it is, Nautilus. Art characters, bots. Um, let's go ahead and bring this guy in. So here's a little robot guy, a little salt shaker guy. So one thing you can do is you can organize these. So if we go in here and let's do a quick uh, split to similar parts here. And hopefully, actually I probably should have done a mirror and weld. Uh, that would make it so that these vert counts. Whoa, and the brush disappeared. Well, I gotta head out. But what you can do is, uh, now that you have folders, you can uh, put all your, you know, your bicep and your forearm and your hand all in separate folders. Uh, but again, it's not going to solve your pivot problem. However, um, let's set the comma key here. I don't understand why I can't hit my computer. E photo Nautilus. And you can, uh, if it ever does that and it's, uh, it is a deal breaker for you to kind of split this thing up, I'll show you how to do it in just a second. Metamol salt here. So again, I can just do a quick mirror and weld, uh, make sure it's symmetrical. And then if I wanted to break this part up manually, I just go through here, control shift. Let's grab select lasso. So I'm gonna grab like all the hand stuff, control shift A, and then do a split hidden. And then, um, oops, actually let's merge that back down. I hit X to go across X symmetry here, and then grab these, control shift A, and then we'll go ahead and split. Um, and actually, I'm going to turn off this so we can see a little bit better. So now you can just go through here, and it's like, okay, now I've got the forearm, control shift A, and then split this off, and then I'll tap here, and now I've got, I don't know, all this stuff, and then control shift A, and then split that off. So now you have arm and upper arm and this. Now you're going to see the pivot points here are going to be these elbows here. So if you do have groups of objects here, so if we have a shoulder, and then we have a elbow here. So now we've got these three. You can put all three of these in a folder and you can hit W to do this and then you can turn on hatch and then you can unhatch this one, this one, and this one. And you can say control F and throw those all into a folder. We'll call this upper arm. So now we have upper arm all in one folder. Uh, we can unmask these. So if you wanted to move your entire upper arm, you can do that. However, if you want to set your pivot, uh, that'll just be a matter of having an object in here that, and it can be a null object too, it doesn't have to be something physical. Um, you can just make a cylinder, but if you hit W, you can always you know, set that pivot direction and then go to unmatch mesh center, and then that will be your pivot. So when you do want to go in here and you say you want to transpose um, the set, then you can go through here and you can just use this as your pivot. And again, it can be a null object. It can just be a cylinder sitting in there in the direction you want. Is it ideal? No. Ideally, every folder could have a pivot point that you can, or every object can have a pivot point that you can set because then you can do animation and you can do the parent hierarchy. Uh, so you can do animation previs and stuff. And if you want to see more on that, um, if you go to my, Zebra, or my YouTube channel, there's the uh, Zebra Summit 2018 demos that I did. And if you view the full playlist, I think I talk a little bit about it. Um, you can check this out. Um, but also, if you just Google, um, Pavlovich ZBrush Summit 2018. Uh, yeah, using ZBrush to facilitate smarter, blah, 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 lots of words. You can go down here and you can see this like animation previous, uh, perfect. Right here, uh, nine, uh, 10 minutes in, 
you can see the animation previous I was doing for some weapons, and this is why the parent hierarchy stuff would be really cool to have in ZBrush. So I don't have to do that kind of stuff in Maya. Uh, but you can see weapon previous stuff I was doing for that. So anyway, I gotta go. Sorry everybody. Um, I'll be on my channel on Thursday. Um, gotta get my wife to get her car, so or at least get stuff uh, moved over, uh, towed over, I should say. So cool, awesome. Thanks so much everybody for showing up. Uh, usually the first Tuesday and Thursday of every month. First Tuesday of every month is Pixelogic. First Thursday of every month is my channel, Path Mike Twitch. Uh, I'm gonna try to do streaming more. Uh, as I get kind of settled into my new house. So thanks everybody. And I will see you guys later. I think I got all the questions here and we'll, we'll go deeper into other stuff too. We'll start answering questions and sorry everybody on my discord. I'll get to your files on Thursday. Cool. Thanks everybody.